We want to turn your attention to Richmond, Virginia now, where moments ago the state's lieutenant governor, Justin Fairfax, addressed the controversy surrounding Governor Ralph Northam, who is refusing calls to step down over a racist photo that appeared on his medical school yearbook page. Let's listen in. Hi, how are you all? Good to see you. Yes. The allegation is completely false, uh, as was indicated uh, in our statement. And uh, if you read through the story, you'll see it's uh, completely uncorroborated. Uh, and the fact that they would run a story on an uncorroborated allegation uh, from now 15 years ago uh, tells you exactly uh, what this smear is all about. Uh, and so we have laid out uh, our facts in, in our case. And in fact, uh, this person uh, a year ago uh, came to the Washington Post with this very same allegation. Uh, they investigated it uh, for several months, uh, and then they made the decision uh, not to publish uh, the story because it was not credible, because it was uncorroborated. Uh, and what we know is that it's false uh, and defamatory. And so uh, this person then went into hiding and uh, laid low in the weeds. And then uh, the second that uh, this uh, issue popped up here in Virginia, and there's a lot of media attention, crops back up with the same uh, false allegation and uses others uh, to uh, get it out into the mainstream of the media. But uh, what I know uh, is that uh, the truth is 100% on our side. Uh, I read the Bible, Ephesians 6:11 this morning, and I put on the full armor of God, uh, and uh, that allows us to deal with the devil's schemes and tricks. And uh, so, again, uh, to have someone uh, manipulate uh, the press and, and to come out a year ago, uh, fail at getting that into the media, uh, then go away, and then when they think they have an opportunity uh, at maximum uh, media uh, attention point uh, to come back again with the same uh, false uncorroborated allegation, tells you everything you need to know about the falsity of it, uh, about uh, you know the, the, the person uh, who is making the allegation, and, and also about the environment that we're in. Uh, and what we uh, really have to do, what I'm really, really focused on right now at this moment, this critical juncture uh, in history, uh, 400 years commemorating uh, the uh, meeting of this assembly, 400 years since the first enslaved Africans were brought to the Commonwealth of Virginia and Hampton and Point Comfort. Uh, we are at a moment in history uh, where we have to choose. Uh, and we have to decide whether or not we're going to rise to the better angels of our nature uh, or if we're going to allow attacks and smears and the worst aspects of our politics uh, to govern. And I have chosen uh, to rise. I have chosen uh, to be positive. I have never had to tear anyone down uh, in my life and never would uh, because that is my character. And so I will uh, be 40 years old uh, next month, and I have lived 40 years uh, and uh, accusation-free. Uh, and there's a reason for that. Uh, and there's also a reason that at the moment, uh, when people see what's going on uh, in the Commonwealth of Virginia, uh, they see uh, our politics uh, in a little bit uh, of, a, of a flux and a very uh, serious situation that's going on. And they think that, uh, you know, there's a possibility that I might be elevated uh, to the governorship. It's at that point uh, that they come out with the attacks and the smears. Uh, and it's unfortunate. Uh, it really is. But it's sadly a part uh, of our politics now. Uh, but I am someone uh, who was raised by incredible uh, parents, uh, particularly I was raised by a strong woman. I am married to one, and now I am raising one uh, in my seven-year-old daughter. And so uh, I hugged my kids uh, today, and I dropped them off uh, at school, uh, as we normally do. I hugged my wife, gave her a, a big hug and, uh, and a big kiss. I love her uh, very deeply. Uh, and my family uh, is strong. Uh, my faith is incredibly strong. Uh, my faith in God uh, is unshaken. Uh, we will not only deal with this uh, smear as we've dealt with so many other attacks over time, uh, but we've always, uh, when we've been attacked, uh, been elevated. Uh, every single time someone is attacked, whether it's a lie, uh, whether it's a smear, a political attack, a personal attack, a character attack, a character assassination attempt, uh, we've always not only gotten through it, but we have been elevated. Uh, and I, my faith in God is so strong, uh, and I know uh, that the facts uh, will show exactly uh, what we have borne out. How would you describe the relationship? How would you describe the relationship? What, what was what the relationship? relationship? What relationship? With, with, the, woman. with, with this woman? Uh, it's someone who I met uh, in 2004 uh, at the Democratic uh, National Convention, and as I mentioned, uh, I told all this to the Washington Post at the time, uh, a year ago, uh, and there's not one fact uh, that I gave to them uh, that they were able to contradict. Can you tell us what happened? Uh, what is it? Sure, sure. I met her uh, at the convention. Uh, we met and uh, you know talked and I did not know her prior to um, I was 25 years old unmarried uh, a campaign staffer uh, at the time and uh, we hit it off she was uh, you know, very interested in me and uh, and so eventually at one point uh, we ended up going uh, to uh, my hotel room uh, this is in 2004 
Uh, she was, you know, very uh, much into, um, you know, consensual encounter. And she even admits in the story there's a consensual uh, activity going on. And, and again, I have children, so I'm going to be very circumspect uh, about what I say. Um, but, but everything was 100% consensual. And not only that, uh, the same uh, person. Uh, called me uh, sometime later and wanted to meet with me, wanted to come visit me. Uh, I was still in law school, at Columbia Law School, wanted to come to New York City to meet with me, wanted me to meet her mother, uh, and said that years later, and, uh, I'm sorry, months later in this case, uh, and years later now, uh, we have a totally fabricated story uh, out of the blue that's meant to attack me uh, because of where I am in politics. The fact that it only came uh, up once I won. Uh, and remember, I have run for office before. Uh, I ran in 2013 in a primary statewide. Uh, I ran in 2017 in a primary statewide. Uh, I ran, of course, in the general and won. It was only at the point uh, that I won uh, that this person uh, fabricates this claim uh, and then attempts to, again, get it into the media. And when they fail the first time uh, to get it into the media, uh, comes back around uh, a year later at another point of maximum media attention and once again tries to get it in uh, through uh, you know, some website and some people who we know who are uh, involved in this. And so no one who's telling the truth operates in that way. Uh, I have nothing to hide, and, and yet to have someone manipulate the media, if you were telling the truth, there's no reason that you would go away for a year once you fail to get it into the Washington Post uh, and then come back later, again, with zero cooperation whatsoever, and there's no cooperation because that did not happen. There was no uh, no inappropriate contact whatsoever. Uh, and so but my you did have a sexual it. relationship with her in the room, but it was consensual. Is that a correct uh, just as description I of yes. what happened? Just as I described to the Post, absolutely. Sir, just as I described to the Post. Can you say definitively, should the governor resign? Uh, can I say definitively? Yes. Uh, can you make it? You know, I've, I've made my statement on that. I believe that the governor has to make the decisions in the best interest of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, and I know that there are uh, many others who have called on uh, him to resign. I believe that uh, I'm in a unique position, uh, obviously, uh, as lieutenant governor and uh, someone who would uh, have to you know, assume that office uh, in the event that he were to resign. And so I have to be very uh, circumspect. I have to think about the people of the Commonwealth of Virginia. I have to They're think about the Commonwealth West itself. Go. People can say, you know, whatever they'd like. And I've made uh, my statement, you know, on that front. Again, I believe the governor has to make a decision that's in the best interest uh, of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Hey, governor, would you be ready? Would you be ready? Would you be ready? Sorry. Yeah, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take a, I'll take yeah, a couple have, more. Have, have, what conversations sorry, sorry. have you had? Paul, do you have proof of, the, of a text or emails that you just referred to where she's asking you to come to New York to, to meet her mother? It, no, it was a phone call, as I mentioned. Okay. Yeah, so she no contacted me. No, and, 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 and in fact, uh, it's a great question. Uh, you know, there were no texts, there were no uh, emails that were produced to us uh, by the Washington Post by this person because it simply didn't happen. Furthermore, um, you all will, you know, see more information, and, and I'm all about, you know, the information, uh, you know, being uh, made public. But in the course of our initial discussions with the Washington Post, uh, we uh, sh showed them, you know, ample evidence of the inconsistencies uh, in, in the story, uh, including there's a, a video uh, of, of this person from about 12 years ago uh, talking about sexual assaults that had happened to her, talking about her history, saying that you know we needed to make sure that we were loud about these things and came out in the public. And yet in the court, and she also talked about having been in Boston uh, and worked at the, uh, a rape crisis center at the time of this encounter. And yet in that video, never says a word about having been assaulted in Boston, about having been assaulted as an adult, or about having been assaulted by me. But you don't have proof that, that after the encounter, you guys stayed in touch in any way. No, like I said, it was a phone call. And again, this is 14 years ago. And in fact, uh, when we you know, first were, you know, this thing was uh, not only from left field, it's from the planet Mars, because it didn't happen uh, in, the, in the way that is described. And so uh, you know, we looked for ways to try to you know, get, uh, if there were emails or texts, again, the fact that there were none there were zero presented to the Washington Post, uh, and they admit even the story that they just ran that this is com it was uncorroborated. Uh, how many elected officials? And how, many elected officials how many elected officials? How many? Hold on one second. How many elected officials in the Commonwealth of Virginia have ever been smeared in this way with a completely uncorroborated, completely uncorroborated story have and allegation? Have you seen her since Boston? I can't hear you. Have you seen her since Boston? Over I, don't, I don't believe I have. You spoken to her? Do you think the Senate, and, and, Do you think the lawmakers should come? Do you think she should come here and tell her story publicly in front of lawmakers? You know. I, look, I, anyone is free uh, to, to, to speak up and to be heard. And I think it's important that people are heard. Uh, you know, this issue is a very important one, which is uh, frankly precisely why uh, it's such a shame uh, that, you know, this has been weaponized and used uh, as a smear, uh, because this is a very real issue. Uh, and I'm someone who uh, has uh, treated, uh, you know, women with respect and, and, and always uh, observe uh, certain decorum. And so, uh, again, I think everybody should be heard. But he, here's what's very uh, important. 
Uh, she was heard by the Washington Post, and the Washington Post didn't believe her. Uh, because they did not they print the story. Oh, what about collective PACs or collective PAC? They said that uh, you believe that the governor's team is spreading misinformation about your team. Can you comment on that, please, sir? Uh, the collective PAC has you know, made its statement. Uh, and so, you believe it? You, could, you know, you I, I don't know uh, precisely where this is coming from. I, you know, we've heard uh, different things. But, but here's the thing. Uh, does anybody think it's any coincidence that on the eve uh, of potentially uh, my being elevated, that that's when this uncorroborated smear comes out. Does anybody believe that's a coincidence? Uh, I, don't, I don't think anybody believes that's a coincidence. Again, particularly with something, this was not the first time this was uh, brought up. It was a year ago uh, this was brought up. Uh, you know, and, and yet, the Post who investigated it for three months dropped the story, did not do it, and they did not do it because it was uncorroborated, and it's uncorroborated because it's not true. And so it goes away uh, for a year, and it crops back up right at this moment. Uh, you don't have to be uh, cynical. Uh, you don't have to understand politics uh, to understand when someone's trying to manipulate uh, a process to uh, to harm someone's character without any basis whatsoever. Uh, and again, uh, I have lived my life uh, in, in in a way that I'm proud of. Uh, I've put myself up for election to the people of Commonwealth of Virginia multiple times. Uh, you never, in the course of any campaign I have ever run, uh, had anything uh, said uh, like this uh, about me. Uh, and again, I'm someone who uh, grew up uh, in, a, in a tough environment, Northeast Washington, D.C. Uh, but because people invested in me, I went to Duke University, Columbia Law School. I was on the Law Review at Columbia. Uh, I was a federal prosecutor. I have been through two FBI background checks in my life. I got a top secret security clearance. Uh, and I have been an attorney, a federal prosecutor. Uh, and now I'm a, a partner in a law firm and sitting as the lieutenant governor of the Commonwealth this, of Virginia. Can you just tell us what you've done to prepare? The reason why Governor Northam is taking his time in, in resigning? I have no idea uh, what the governor's thinking is on that front. Uh, you have, have to ask him. When was the last time you spoke with him directly? Uh, it was probably uh, a couple of days ago. What about what you? Day? Day? I, I would have to check and see. Sorry. Was it Saturday after the press conference? conference? Did you talk to him after the press uh, conference? I don't know. I don't think I have. I'd what have to double check on records. What did you meet about last night, sir? I did not meet with him. That was actually an incorrect report. Um, I was actually in Northern Virginia with my family. And, and again, that's a, that's a very important point. Uh, facts matter. Uh, and so just because something is reported does not mean it is true. Uh, and that was one prime example. It was verifiable that I was with my family yesterday. Uh, and I just came to Richmond. Do you think it's in the best interest of Virginia for you to ascend to the governorship? And what have you done to prepare for that? Specific details, sir. Uh, well, listen, I am the lieutenant governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, uh, elected by 1.36 million Virginians. Uh, they put their trust and their faith uh, in me to serve in that role. And I have uh, honored that trust and faith uh, Staff in serving members, that role. discussions? I'm sorry, what with, about? Your, with your staffers, with your discussions, what you would do on day one if you are ascended to that position? You know, look, there, there, like I said, there's a lot of uncertainty right now uh, in our government, uh, but we always have to be prepared um, to assume our roles and responsibilities that are given to us by the Virginia Constitution. This is not uh, something that anyone, uh, you know, formulated uh, in terms of how this process uh, proceeds. And so uh, we are prepared and we'll continue to be prepared. But, but uh, no, okay. William yes. & Mary has already rescinded. Okay. William & Mary has already Listen, pulled I, back their invitation. Okay. Okay, I have to go. I'll present it. Thank you. Thank you all so much. God bless you. What's her motive? What's her motive? Okay. What's her motive? Okay. Okay. What's her motive? And we've been listening to Virginia Lieutenant Governor Justin Fairfax denying a sexual account, uh, a sexual assault allegation that appeared on the same conservative website that also posted the racist photograph from Governor Ralph Northam's medical school yearbook page. Um, he alleges that a consensual encounter did take place in his hotel room one night in 2004. This was before he was married. He says that night is being mischaracterized and used against him just as the possibility of him being elevated to the position of governor is being floated. This is, of course, if Governor Northam resigns, even though he has shown, he has given no indication that he plans to do so. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with much more CBSN. Stay with us.